Hi, this is Michael Orl from RebelBaron.com, and this is the HTC One S. It's a brand new dual-core Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich device, and it features HTC's brand new Sense4 user interface. So here's the HTC One S. Uh, let's take a look at the hardware. We've got a 4.3 inch QHD resolution display. That's 540 pixels by 960 pixels. Nice and bright and sharp. Three buttons along the bottom. This is an Android 4.0 device built from scratch with that OS in mind. So we've got back, home, and task switcher. Uh, there's no search button. Take a look at the profile of the device. Uh, nice and thin. My calipers say it's about 7.9 millimeters thick. See, we've got a micro USB port here on the left. You can also use it with an MHL adapter for HDMI output to a television set. Up top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, secondary noise canceling microphone pinhole, and the power standby button. Back of the device, 8 megapixel main camera with a LED flash, and it has a new micro arc oxidation on a aircraft aluminum body. Uh, plastic caps on the end because there's antennas in there but the aluminum body is uh, really cool. It's uh, very I wouldn't call it exactly rough but it's kind of grippy without being soft and it's very resistant to fingerprints and scratches. It's quite hard. On the right hand edge we've got the volume control and down at the bottom just the normal microphone pinhole. On the front of the 1S we've got a forward-facing VGA resolution camera the speaker grill right here and there's also a notification LED embedded in there. If we flip the device around, we'll be able to remove this back panel so you can see that there's antennas built into the panel and there's also the micro SIM card slot here. There's no micro SD memory card slot expansion available here but there is 16 gig of storage built into the device. In terms of RAM, you've got one gigabyte of application RAM backing up the 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processor. I'm very impressed with the 1S's hardware. Um, it's very thin and uh, extremely comfortable in their hand and I really like the micro arc oxidation process that was used on the aluminum body. Um, not real thrilled with the plastic end caps but that's kind of a necessity when you have an aluminum body phone. You need somewhere for the antennas to reside. The device is nice and thin as I mentioned but it's also very light. It weighs about 121 grams which puts it about 13-14 grams lighter than the 1X. And even though the upper end cap on the phone is removable the 1650 milliamp hour battery that's inside the device is not. Uh, it's just like the 1X, the 1S has a fixed battery. While I'm using this 1S on AT&T's network in the US it's actually a European model. As such, it only supports the 850, 900, and 2100 megahertz HSPA network bands and does not fully support AT&T's network, which also uses 1900. In addition to the HSPA data, we've got uh, Wi-Fi 802.11b, g, and n, Bluetooth 4.0 as well. You'll also find support for hotspot tethering as well as Wi-Fi Direct. Since the software on the One S is almost exactly the same as that on the One X, I'm only going to breeze through some of the features and show some of the things I didn't show in the One X video. If you're interested in seeing all the details, you should probably check out the video I did for the One X as well. Here's the main menu. You've got tabs down here at the bottom for frequently access and the apps that you've downloaded yourself. HTC has redone the home screen widget controls a bit. It's a little bit easier to managed than the stock Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich, much better organized. It's easier to find the widget you're looking for. You've probably noticed that the buttons along the bottom of the screen now can be configured and they also show up on the lock screen if you so choose. In this particular lock screen I have uh, notifications but you have options for others as well. Go into the personalize section you can see I can change the lock screen to one using social networking or contacts or weather or something like that. I'm going to hit the task switcher button down here at the bottom of the device and go back into the personalized app. It's one of the things I'm really fond of. That's not a big deal but I like that you can download new sounds from HTC's website. and Then you can set the entire sound set to be active on your phone. So say you were into jazz for example Pick one you like, and listen to a couple of uh, samples here. 
And if you think that's good, then you can just download it for free direct to your device. And now I can apply this as the ringtones on my device. I'll take a quick look at some of the widgets that are pre-installed on the device. This is a very useful mail widget. This is a combined inbox view from uh, two different accounts. A nice stock widget. You also have the option for a lock screen with your stocks as well. And of course calendar widgets. Easy to remove them. Just drag them up to the notification bar. And speaking of which, you'll notice that the notification area in Sense 4.0 has been simplified quite a bit. There's no shortcuts to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and things like that. You have the ability to remove a particular notification just by swiping it away, or you can also hit the clear button to remove them all. Additionally, this is probably the primary way of getting into settings on the phone. Contacts are typically accessed through a widget like this one here, or through the phone application. Just on the tab down here at the bottom. You can go through, you see they'll look quite nice. You have the ability to tell the system which contact sources you want to use. For example, if I didn't want to see all of the Twitter people that I follow, I just uncheck it there. Same thing, I can tell it not to show me any of the phone or SIM contacts as well. You'll notice social networking updates. Uh, this is a Twitter update for the Another Man Test account that we have. And the system also links contacts automatically. I'll jump into the main menu and go to the HTC Watch application. You can buy and rent movies, TV episodes, things like that. Um, they have some really good deals on the weekend. You can see five cent rental specials. Uh, some of these are pre pretty old, but uh, some of them aren't that old, and some are just funny. Just to show you, I've got a couple here that I picked up for five cents. Just have to log in. And it's going to pull down my list of rentals. And let's take a look at Alfie. Once you've purchased a rental, you have 30 days with which to start watching it. And then once you've started, you have 24 hours to watch the movie. So I'll just hit the play button here and we can start watching our rental. The video looks pretty good on the QHD resolution display. I'll give a very quick demonstration of the web browser. It's the same as the one we saw in the One X and it exhibits the same problems and offers the same features. For example, in the menu here, you have convenient access to turning on and off flash. Naturally, it's flash capable, also HTML5 video capable. But it has the same kind of zooming problems that we've seen on the One X. For example, if I double tap on this video button here, you'll see how it zooms in and then flips over to the wrong spot on the screen for some reason. Otherwise, it's nice and smooth, uh, renders quickly, pages load well. You have access to tabs. But like I said in the One X video, if you're going to be running an Android 4 ice cream sandwich device, you really should check out the Chrome beta browser that Google has put out. Quick run through the calendar application. You can see we've got multiple views here. Everything is very cool looking, so well rendered. Works in portrait mode naturally. As you can see on the back of the One S, it's a Beats Audio phone. As such, it has a reasonable music player. Got access to our own albums and music that we've loaded up. But there's also access to the Seven Digital Music Store, SoundHound for identification, and TuneIn Radio, where you can listen to ground based radio stations streamed over the internet. Tap down here to get into the messaging application. Nice looking threaded SMS, MMS message system. Uh, the XT9 capable Sense keyboard also supports Trace. So 
So this is tracing. It's like swipe, but it's not quite as good. And even though the cursor controls on the keyboard take up a fair amount of space, I still like it, and I also like the little magnifying glass thing. It's kind of an iPhone style for moving the cursor around. HTC installed a uh, fine email client on the One S, just like on the One X. You can look at a combined account, or you can look at a uh, separate inbox. Quite easy to switch back and forth. It's also the Gmail client built in. One of the things I like about the lock screen is the shortcuts down here. You just drag one of the shortcuts into the ring to activate the appropriate application. In this case, the camera app, which makes it very convenient. Camera is very fast. Can even hold down the shutter button and record a lot of images. It's the best shot mode where it will pick what it believes to be the best one and then remove the rest of them or you can pick the one you like it yourself. Quick access to filters. The vignette one's kind of cool. And you can start recording a video very easily just by tapping the video button. Let's make sure we're in full HD mode though. So we're now recording a video dynamic focusing, it'll focus on my hand for example and then focus back on the keyboard. It's not doing it right now. There we go. And while recording a video you can actually record still photos without the video skipping a beat, which is very handy. So here's the video we recorded. Yo. Dynamic focusing, it'll focus on my hand, for example, and then very nice audio quality. Focus back on the keyboard. I'm doing it right now. There it goes. And these are the images I shot while recording the video. Down here in the bottom left hand corner is the scenes control, and you'll notice that slow motion video is one of the options there. I'll start a slow motion video and we'll take a look at it. You can see how it's slowed down my finger snapping. So to wrap up I'm going to go back into the personalize application and change the scene back to the default just so you can see how it's easy to configure multiple home screen layouts and then switch back and forth between them using HTC scenes. So there you have it. That's my very quick and incomplete look at the HTC One S for mobileburn.com. I'm Michael Oral. Thanks for watching.